Welcome to the Appleton Museum of Art. We're doing a fall painting. I'm going to hold up the example that I had had. And basically, you're doing an illusion. I guess you could say more of an impressionist painting. The illusion of a forest in the fall. And it's really not very hard to do. And I think you're going to have fun doing it. So what you need to do first, we're going to paint the sky in. And I am actually going to switch cameras now. So you're going to see overhead where um, what I am exactly doing. You know, I have got my canvas horizontal, vertical, whichever one you want to do, totally up to you. Okay. And what I'm going to do first, I've got my palette of yellow and red. I've got some orange. I've got some blue. I have black that I'll add later and white. But the first thing I want to do is mix up uh, a light blue and let's see, get my white out here and paint my sky in. I would paint about halfway down and I'm going to start here. This is my palette. I use a piece of plexiglass. And in fact, I've got two pieces here. And right now I've got just little blobs of paint. And we're going to put a lot of paint directly on the canvas. So I've got a little bit of these colors, but I will show you in a few minutes. I'm going to scoop out paint and I'm going to put it directly on my on my canvas. And I'm saving these for mixing. We buy all already prepared canvases at the museum. We buy so many canvases that, yeah, we don't gesso our own canvas. Is everything is already prepared when we bought when we buy them. Or if we want to paint on a black canvas, we will we have black gesso that we use and rather than buying black canvases. Otherwise, we, we buy the white ones all prepared. You know what? Right now I'm mixing up a very light blue. You can always go back and make this darker, but right now I'm just going to make a very light, light blue. And I'm going to paint down probably about halfway. And I do actually have some dark darker on my paintbrush that's but you can make the sky as dark as you want, obviously, but I just want to do a very light blue. I actually have an 11 by 14. This is horizontal. I just want more of a tree line. So I'm using my canvas horizontal. It's funny because most of the time I will paint with a vertical canvas, but since you're painting a tree line this way, you're going to get to have more trees across that canvas. Using the transparent um, canvas, the question is, you know, does it make the color? I, I don't know. I just, I find it's just easier to use. It's easier to clean up. I like it better than using a white. And, and I have it on top of a black piece of paper. So I don't know, maybe it does make the colors more vibrant. I actually hadn't thought about that before, but um, the colors do show up much better than uh, underneath, you know, having white paper underneath it. Never really thought about that. It is what you see. You know, it's not really like house paint or something like that. I, what you're painting on here is what you're going to get when it dries. It really does not change. Acrylic doesn't do that. Like watercolor, I'm just going to paint the sides here, the top. Watercolor does dry lighter. Acrylic does not. I want to say something that every once in a while, I probably will pick my canvas up and angle it a bit because the light sometimes gives and the wet paint gives a funny reflection. So uh, just, you know, that's why I'm moving it around every once in a while so I can see it. So if you've got your, your paint, uh, your sky painted in, what you want to think about is your tree line. You're going, you know, obviously you're going from side to side and you want some high and lows and mediums. And so you want to think about, do you want your low spot in the middle? Doesn't have to be, but think about about where you want your trees to be. We want to create an overlapping trees as well. And we'll talk about that later. We'll do that. So right now I'm going to start putting paint on my canvas and I'm going to start at the bottom because we're going to spread that paint up the canvas. What I'm going to do right now is you saw my palette and I have some blobs of paint, but I'm actually going to take my containers of paint and I'm going to put like little vertical blobs, I guess you could call them. And I like a lot of yellow. So going across here, I'm just going to put some yellow across here. Just I've got popsicle sticks. Uh, maybe I'll put a little bit there. And I have a deeper red and I don't usually, I don't use a lot of this, but I'm going to put some here.
watercolor is not easy to master. And I find acrylic is a lot more forgiving because it does stay wet longer. I want to add some green here. So actually on my palette, I am going to mix up a green. I've mixed up some green and I want to put some green here and I'll put a little bit of green here. Now, a lot of times I use a palette knife, but you can use, you can even use a piece of cardboard if you want to, if you don't have a palette knife. When I get up to the top, so I am creating like points. Let's see, I'm going to wipe some of this off and I'm going to keep going here. I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to scrape things up. You can mix these as you're going up. Now I'm going to use a palette knife here too. And I'm going to spread. Now I'm going to go back here. I'm going to get a little more yellow. And this is the thing is you can keep adding to this. And as you're doing this, you're mixing it in. It is a beautiful mess. That's the beauty of this painting. I'm going to put a little green in here too. And each time I do this, I'm, I'm ending in a point even down here, um, I want to create like a triangle. That's what I'm going for here. Now I'm going back to my palette, as you can see, and I'm, I'm trying to grab some other colors or a darker red here and put some of that in there. This little, I've got to fix this one here because it's, it doesn't really look like a triangle. So I'm going to, Bring that here, I'm gonna get a little more yellow. You're going to end up with a lot of paint on this. And right now it may not look like much, but don't worry, it will. I'm gonna put a little yellow in here and maybe a little bit more yellow down here. Put some more green in here. If you don't have a palette knife or a piece of cardboard, you know, you can use a flat brush and just kind of dab it on. You're just, you know, you're doing, a, you're getting a lot of thick paint on here right now. If you've got too much orange or too much red, actually take your palette knife or a piece of cardboard and scrape some of that off and add a bunch of yellow or some green. Really should have some green on there somewhere. I'm going to mix up a little bit more green here, a little bit darker green and add darker green here. What I'm also doing is in my mind, I'm thinking what side is my, my light area like as, as if the sun is coming. So if I've got the dark green on this side, this is going to be my darker side. So maybe I'll put a little bit more green down here. So um, as I add highlights later, the left side of these peaks of the trees will be the lighter side. The right side of these trees will be the darker side. You can bring this all the way down to the bottom. Actually, this can be really kind of fun. It really does start take shape. What you, especially if you're thinking all of these peaks are trees and you're creating this scene. Some more yellow on my palette here. And maybe I'll put a little bit more yellow down here. Some yellow 
in there. The thing is, in a minute, we will be taking the Q-tips and using the Q-tips to give this texture so it actually looks more like the leaves. In fact, let me get some of those. And I've got them in bundles. Of, I taped them in bundles of three and five. And I also have just a whole bunch of extras. And really, what you're doing is you're going to hold these straight up and down. And don't press too hard because you don't want to make spaces where you can see the canvas. But what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm going to concentrate on this tree right here. This orange, this reddish right. orange with a little bit of yellow, any color you want. I am going to use blue along the bottom besides the black. But you know what? I'm going to mix up some purple right here. And that's a little, you know what? Let's try that. I'm going to take a little bit of that on um, my a piece of cardboard and the right side is more okay you know what let's mix a little bit of that blue purpley blue in there that's could be really nice i'm going to put i want this yellow one to look like it's uh, maybe in front of this red one so i'm just going to put I've done several of these. None of them look the same. You know, the, yes, there's a tree line, but none of them look the same. And one of them I did vertical. It, it does change a little bit. The first one I did had lots and lots of yellow in it. And yeah, it just kind of changes. But it's funny now, as I'm looking at this on the computer, on the screen, I'm really liking that purple blended in there because it really gives some dark tones to the sides of my tree. I have got all of that paint. I do want to go back because this is going to take you some time. Using the Q-tips, what you're doing is very lightly going over this and you're, you are blending the colors that you've got, but you're kind of creating that texture of leaves because right now it looks very, it's like a slab and everything is flat and smooth, but this will now give you more of a, a tree texture. The illusion, let's put it, the illusion of leaves. I'm not going to bother too much down towards the bottom. I'm going to slide this up a little bit. All right, here's the bottom where you're going to have, you're going to put a lot of blues and blacks and I'm not going to go all the way down here because we're going to put ground and we're going to put trunks up. So I'm mostly concentrating on the tops here. And since I've already got purple on this, I'm going to skip over to this one. And oh, I got a lot of dark in here. And this is where you may find that you're going to have to go back and add more paint if you if you need to. Like I've got I think, way too much dark in there. So I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to work on this one next to it. Let's see here. And the funny thing is, even towards the end, I'll go back and add more paint with my Q-tips. We'll do some highlighting with this. Right now, just going to go over these. This is where you're trying to create your individual trees now too. Now that yellow one, this yellow one here is going to be behind this one. I think I might bring that dark down a little bit, but I'm going to put some more orange up here, cover a little bit of that dark and just bring that down. You know, and if you need to, you know, grab your palette knife or your cardboard or whatever and add more paint. I can see this side right here is drying pretty quickly on my, definitely do have to add some paint down here. So this is, yeah, this is drying up a little bit here. So I'm just gonna scoop some. Because you're going to have a lot of paint on this, it's going to take, you know, maybe an hour or so because you keep adding more paint. See, I can see this is drying right here. I don't want that to dry because I haven't got to that. So I'll add more paint to that. It will take a couple of hours for that to dry. You can buy a medium that slows down the drying process. It's not a flow medium like Floetrol, you know, that you would use for pouring. But there is a medium that will slow down the drying process. You can put a clear coat on this. What I have used in the past is polyacrylic. I think it's a Minwax. It's called Polycryl. And you can use that. It's a water base, which is nice. It, you know, you don't have to worry about your brushes. You can clean up with water and it goes on very easily. You can always just spray it too with a clear coat. I mean, this is drying up right here. So I'm just going to dab on a little extra. I have to admit though, the polyacrylic, I think it's like I said, I believe it's a Minwax. I have had really good luck with that. I've painted furniture and used that 
and I really haven't had too much trouble with it darkening up on me um, over time. So that's, I think it is a good one. Let's see, got this yellow one here. A little, little tree. do a little bit down here and go back to this, this green one. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not really worried about down here because I'm going to be putting some ground in there. And I do like a lot of light in here. So I'm going to take, again, take some more yellow, put some yellow in here. And blend this in. I'm gonna fix this little blob here. So I think I'm gonna put some green up there. If the, the paint is really still wet and everything, take your palette knife or a piece of cardboard and scrape some of it off and add fresh paint to that area. That might help also. Okay, again, I'm gonna take my piece of cardboard here and I'm gonna scrape that off. Scrape it off, you know. You're still going to have, so I'm, I know where I'm going to put fresh paint here. Just scrape off that part and start again. Put some yellow down here and I'll just bring that up. A lot of times, even when I teach children, I will tell them to stop, get up and stand back and look at their painting and see what's going on. Actually, I have them walk around the room too and see other people's paintings because a lot of times that also helps. You have a problem and you see somebody else is like, ah, oh, that would work. I can go fix mine, but it definitely helps, especially with this, because right now I'm just seeing a lot of like bumpy paint and it can kind of overwhelm your eyes. But if you stand back 
from this and look at it, you get a totally different view of what's going on. You, you know, you can see where your trees are overlapping on what's in the foreground, what's in the background. Okay, wait a minute. Let me move this, this one. This is where you're going. We're going to put a lot of black and blue down here and bring it up. And then we're going to put lines for tree trunks. You're giving the illusion here. You're not really going to paint tree trunks. You're going to use either your palette knife or a piece of cardboard to create that illusion. And then my sunlight is coming. You can see like I've highlighted the right sides of a couple of these trees. Or I've gone back in at the very end and I've put in a brighter yellow. You might even want to mix it a little bit with white and put some light in the forest. I could still add to this right now. That's the neat thing about this. I could go back here and still put some, some paint into this at any time and continue to work on it. because it's all an illusion. But when you, you're sitting here closely looking at it, your eyes kind of start seeing a lot of dots from the Q-tips face back. What I did is I've got bundles. Now this is a bundle of three. The wet paint that's in here, you're just going up and down to create like a texture of leaves. You're blending in some of the paint that you've scraped up also. No, I haven't used any water at all. I put the paint on the canvas and just kind of, and would just kind of spread it up. So there, there is no water involved here at all. You can take individual Q-tips, you know, if there is a little particular area you want to get to. The bundles work pretty good especially at the very beginning, the bundles of five work pretty good to blend those colors together. And yeah, I have to step back myself here and look so I can make sure I'm seeing individual trees. And I still over in here want to fix that spot. So I want to put a little more like right in here. But definitely take a step back and look at your painting. Here. Eventually, I will put some light, some highlights at the tops, but I'm going to wait till the very end to do that. And some of the paint is, has dried, and so then it doesn't blend as much. And if you want to, you can actually dip your Q-tips into some paint and bring it over. If there's paint that you want to add, but you don't want to use your palette knife, dip your Q-tips in here and just add that paint that way, just a little at a time. And always do that too. I actually mixed my own green. Start with some yellow, tiny bit of blue and mix your green. Yellow and black make a beautiful jungle green. Actually, see some of this stuff. I'm going to put black out. I need black anyway. If you mix, let's take some yellow. If you take yellow, little bit of black, you get a really good, like a jungly green very dark this this is a really dark green this is really pretty this is going to be very different where do i want to put this i use a dry brush 
I don't use a wet brush. The water will thin out your paints. So I don't use water. In this painting, I don't use water because I'm really, I'm not looking to make anything very thin. I'm looking to make things thick that I can work with. And the same is going to be for down the bottom here. You're working with thick paint, a nice good layer of, of paint because you're going to work into it all the time. It's not like you're spreading it out nice and even. I put a lighter shade. Sometimes I'll use white if I want, but if you use too much white, it starts to really look fake. I'm trying to create an illusion of like sunlight. And if you use too much white, it really doesn't look good. Get some plain white, put some plain white. Pretty soon, I think I'm gonna get another palette here. If I was to mix up, let's say, I want to highlight, let's say my yellow tree. If I mix some yellow and white. It starts, it's kind of lemony now. Q-tip. So let's say I want to add just some highlights over here. My right sides are my darker side. So I'm going to put, see a little lighter. Uh, yellow in here. I don't know if you can see that that well, but, and then I want to work it into my paint because I don't want it to look too light. Uh, let's add some of this to this orange one. See, we got to be careful because it starts looking too light. I guess it's basically don't overdo the white, really. I could even add a little bit in here and mix it in. You need to blend that in. So a little, a little bit of white, yes, is good to put those highlights in. And I used that light yellow on all of these. Now, obviously I'm not gonna use it on the greens um, unless the greens are still wet because I would mix up a light green. But in this case, this one right here is very, still very wet. So I could put that light yellow in here and kind of mix that in and it, it does give a little bit of light to that, but you just got to be careful. I'm just doing the tips of the trees. But I want it to mix with that green because I don't want it to be really yellowy. Then I'm going to just take a little more green here. Blend that in. Because I don't, oops, don't want it to look like a big bright patch. Just a little bit. You know what, we can always go back and put those highlights in later. You think you're ready for the bottom? I'll show you. You're gonna need some black paint. And I also use some blue when I do this. So I'm gonna put some blue out here. Not a lot of blue, but just a little bit. And I gotta wipe off my palette knife. And I've got a couple of different size pieces of cardboard too that you can use if you don't have a palette knife. And I, I'm gonna use the cardboard, especially to some of the trees. But right now, I'm going to start going across the bottom here with some black. I'm not gonna go up too far right now. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of blue. 
and just put little dabs of blue here. This is ultramarine blue. This is not a primary color blue. It's an ultramarine blue. So it is a darker blue. And now you're going to start bringing that black up. Just lines, bringing that up into your picture. You can do short little ones at first, you know, just kind of bring that up. But then you can also do long ones. And you might have, as you can see, some light ones. You can also, you, if you have cardboard, You can turn the, the palette knife. I'm gonna put, see, black paint on the side of my knife. And I'm gonna start bringing up lines. Or, and you can just, you can flick them a little bit or touch it. You just, whatever you get, from the side of your palette knife or the cardboard. If you've got cardboard, you can dip that cardboard. This is black, yes. And you can mix it in with into a blue if you would like to add some, you know, just make it different. Put some blue in there. I can just I've got to angle this so I can see this a little bit. I'm going to go back into this. I might put just the tip of my, my palette knife. I just, just, just the illusion of some branches or tiny. And some of it can just be like a, a little touch. It doesn't have to be. And there's like right here, there's a little skip in between and that's, that's fine. Just leave it, okay? Just you know, angle your, your palette knife. We will also be adding some white to this. I'm going to add a little more black down here. Go back. I'm going to go back over that black. So you can always go back into this and add some color on top there if you want to. If you think you've got too much black, like I didn't like that way the black came up into that yellow. So I went back and I added some more paint to it. I happen to have a, a different type of palette knife here too, which is, is great for um, little tiny lines. But if you have a piece of cardboard, you know, you can use that little piece of cardboard.
And if you have a lot of paint, like there's a lot of black paint there, I'm just using this and picking up some of that paint and going someplace else with it. What I'm trying to just create is a lot of different trees in the foreground here. I do like to add some blue at, at, to the, the black. It just gives a nice touch of color. So it's not a solid black. You could also, if you still have some dark green, you could mix some, you know, put some dark green in there as well along the bottom. Okay, now that you have added black to these, and some of you need a little bit more black, don't worry about the tree having just one line for the trunk. You just want to put in a whole bunch of lines in here. You're just, you're creating an illusion of lots of trees that maybe are not completely distinguished by um, the color, by those you know, triangle shapes. Don't worry about the branches. Absolutely, don't worry about the branches. You don't need to have a lot of little branches. You know, you can put tiny little lines, you know, like I, I'm using the tip of my palette knife and, you know, you can put a tiny little dot here, tiny little dot there. Don't worry about the branches. They don't really need to be there. It's not all that important to have those little lines. And they're random. The part of the branch is probably poking through all those leaves. So it's not like you're really creating real branches from the trunk. You're just putting little highlights, or little parts of a branch that might have, you know, that somebody can see through all of that foliage, like that little, just a little dot. Okay. That might be just all you might see of the, the branch at the top of that tree. It's not that important. Okay. The trunks of the tree, you're going to turn your palette knife on its side and just kind of make that line. When I did the, the bottom of the, the canvas, I'm, I, I, I kind of think this this is what she's worried or concerned about. I did put black along the bottom, but then I just, I want to bring it up. So the wet paint that's down here, I'm just kind of pushing it up. And in some cases I'm creating a light line because as this goes through the black, but up into the other paint, sometimes like right here, I'm seeing a very light green because I actually took the paint out. some of this is beginning to dry down here anyway. And you can just do, you can bring some of the black up by just the very tip of your brush, just kind of dabbing it up. Not all the way up like a, a trunk, but just a little bit, just kind of up and down and just bring it up. makes me think of the ground, the dark ground in, if you were walking through the forest. I am going to go back to the white. The white you are going to use sparingly. You want to clean off your palette knife. And I'm going to dip mine in some water here and really clean that off. I finish off my edges, especially the bottom and the two sides up to where I painted the blue. I use black. In fact, I can show you with this one. This is the one, see, I have black along the sides. And what I do is I take one of my, my flat brushes and I actually um, kind of flick. And I, there, is a, there is a little bit of black along this edge. And I will show you how to do that. 
if you don't want to do a black edge, you can paint in with your oranges and reds. I just find it easier. I like to use black. Let's just put it that way. I would always paint the bottom black because I've got black paint along the bottom anyway. I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. Back to that white. I've cleaned off my palette knife. I'm really, I'm doing the same thing. Put some more white here so you can see better. There, I'm just dipping again so I can make white lines. And some of these, I'm gonna go sometimes like right next to a black line. I don't want to go down here. I want to go further up into my forest. You don't want to make them too thick. Now this one, um, let's see. Some over here. Let's see. Over here. I have a tendency to make crooked ones too. Some of them can be thicker than others. You don't want to make them too, too thick. But like I said, I like to put them near my black lines. I'm going to use this smaller palette knife. I just want to get a little bit up there maybe. Actually, I don't like that. So I think maybe the white up there doesn't really just doesn't look like it belongs up there. So if that's the case, take your, your Q-tips and kind of blend that out. And then I can always go back and I can put that black line back in. So the nice thing about this fact that this paint is still very wet and thick up here, you can get rid of something if you don't like it. Most of your white lines should just be along the bottom here. And I don't usually use the white for the tiny branches. I usually just use it for the trunks. This one, see that one is a little bit too thick. So I'm just gonna blend that a little bit. I'm gonna go back and add some black to that one. Honestly, I think I'm done. I don't think I want to add any more white to that. Um, you can always go back and add more black to it. Maybe a little bit up here. Little tiny bit of white up there. I don't think I want any white up here in that green one. That's the one I, I took out. Now this line right here, this I can see this is like a yellowy tree. And this line is this white line. I'm don't really like that because it looks like it's coming, sticking out. It doesn't belong anywhere. So I'm going to get rid of that. So you can take your Q-tips and go back into this and just kind of blend out some of those lines if you don't like exactly where they are because you have a lot of wet paint that you can, um, you can use to your advantage. Get rid of this one too a little bit. So, and actually, now that I've blended that white in there, 
I'm going to put some more orange in here. I am going to start adding some highlights to my trees. And I've got the bright yellow, but let's add a little bit of, I'm going to take some orange here and I'm going to add, I'm just going to lighten up that orange. Not really sure that's, it's really too light. So let's make that a little bit more orangey. And um, so I could add a little bit of light orange to the side of this one. My left side is my lighter side where the sunlight you know, might be hitting the tops of these trees. I'm gonna put a little bit of light orange in here too. Let's try a little bit here. Mix in a little bit of that light. This is where you kind of get to play, kind of keep blending in. See how, how you like that. I don't really like that on this side, so I'm gonna go back and darken that up. And you just keep blending until you get it. Well, that one I'm going to leave alone. This one, this one probably I'll leave alone. This one I've got to work on a little bit. So I've got to mix up um, a little more green. Take some yellow here. A little bit of blue. I still have some on my palette. happens here. Maybe I'll take a little bit of white. Don't really like that. So I'm going to add some, mix some yellow into this. See, sometimes when you add white to the color, now I mix white with that light green and I really don't like it. Um, so I am gonna go back and make just a regular green. Just maybe just put a bunch of yellow in there. That gives me a better green. Try this. You could use watercolor paper. It has watercolor paper has a really nice texture to it. You could use watercolor paper. Um, it's going to give you that texture will probably show up a little bit, which would be really nice. You know, um, yes, you can. It's nice and strong rather than a regular, you know, regular piece of paper. Yeah, the watercolor paper would, I would think, would be, um, would be good to use. Just put a little more dark in there. Yeah. And let's go. This one, I am going to put some light in here. Put a little green back here. There's some more trees.
this one down here. See, the, the nice thing about this is you can keep, like I said, you can keep going back into this and working with it. I'm just, yeah, this one just seemed to be a, an awful lot of yellow. So I'm gonna go and add some orange to this. I can always go back and make those lines because I still have a lot of wet paint here. And I've got some areas here where I scraped, where um, the paint is actually kind of scraped off. So I'm just gonna fill that in a little bit. And right about now, I'm done. That's how I feel right now because I, I keep adding to this. I'm just, it's going to get away from me. If I look at this tomorrow, maybe I might change my mind. But right now, I do believe I'm done. In fact, I'm just looking at a lot of the white. Maybe did I overdo it, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm going to leave it alone and, um, and see what happens to it tomorrow when I look at it. <laughs> And that's, you know, that with this kind of painting, you absolutely can go back and, and work at it because you're, you're working with thick paint. So you can add blobs of paint to cover it. Like tomorrow when this is dry, if you want to cover something over and um, rework that area, you can absolutely do that. You know, put some of the paint on, get yourself some Q-tips and you can work on that. And uh, just, I'm just going to soften up that white line too. And if the white lines, see some of these to me are just a little bit too, too bright in different areas, then I, while the paint is still wet, just kind of go around them and just kind of soften up that area if you think it's too much. But I do believe um, I've, I've done enough on this right now. I want to show you, tilt this up, how I did the sides of mine. I actually have got, I've got black paint on this brush and I'm holding this at an angle. And what I'm trying to do is catch the edge of this. So I'm, you know what, let's do it this way. Okay. I'm going to paint the, the, the bottom of this black, but I'm going to catch the edge of this and what happens is it flicks a little bit of black up on here. Now you can't see that too much here. There, okay. I would leave the edge blue where the sky is, although I might cover a little of, because I've got paint here, but I would paint this black and I tend to do the whole side. So I'm gonna do the whole side. The top edge I'm gonna leave, I will leave, um, the blue of the sky. But see what's going to happen now is I take my brush and on the edge, I just kind of flick. I want to catch that edge. It gives a little bit of black to that. And I'm going to do it on the sky so you can see. But see how it gives a little bit of black along that edge. I have a tendency to do this to a lot of my paintings. I'll just, I'm going to do this on the other side. So when I'm doing this, I'm just, there's that little bit of black. I catch the edge and just kind of flick it over. I wouldn't do it across the top. And if you've got too much black, you can always go back and, and touch up that sky. Let me turn this around. Paint 
this. So I, I, you can see a little bit of the black that has, has kind of flicked over the edge of that kind of, what you wanna do is angle your brush. So it's, it's catching the edge just a little. Paint that bottom. I want to just thank everybody for coming to the uh, our virtual 101s at the Appleton Museum and um, do some more painting. Goodbye from the Appleton. I'm Marie Fielding. Bye.